Hello everyone, welcome back to Humble Acres. So we are going to be working on a lot of new parts putting on this thing today. We have a lot of brake components, we have a clutch master cylinder, brake master cylinder, all the uh, rubber brake lines we have to do. We have brake shoes and hardware on the inside of those. Um, that's probably what we're going to be going through today is just the brake system and the clutch system because we have a new clutch uh, slave cylinder as well. I don't have the clutch line yet. That's supposed to be coming, but I don't know if we're going to change the clutch slave cylinder yet. I might see if that one's still okay, but it's probably bad. That's what we're going to be doing in this video, so let's get to it. Probably start by trying to get this drum off here, and I'm sure it's not going to be super easy. And we're probably going to have to release the pressure off of the pads, but we're just going to try to get it off with a good old fashioned hammer first and see what happens. Sorry, I forgot I wasn't recording. I uh, tapped it loose. I didn't have to loosen anything, but I'm really glad I'm doing this because there's, there's no pad left. <laughs> the drums actually look good. They're going to need cleaned up, but they look fine. There's no lip on it, hardly at all. There's a tiny one, but barely anything. So I think these drums will be good. But yeah, these, uh, that's not going to work. <laughs> I did get a new hardware kit too, which it definitely looks like we'll need. I didn't get new wheel cylinders. Once again, they weren't really that expensive, but I was just really hoping that I could reuse these. I We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. There's not a lot of hope for it, honestly, because it does not look good. But we'll see what happens. Let me get the bottom one too. Yeah, there's no pad on the bottom either. <laughs> Lot of junk in there, that's for sure. That's all garbage. Pin out of there. We got new pins and springs, which there weren't even any springs in there. So that's good. Uh, there's just a lot of junk in there. It's not rusted out at all though. That's a really good thing. Probably gonna have to take the wheel cylinders off and get everything loosened up. All right, we're gonna see if I can get one of these wheel cylinders off and see how it looks once I get it off. These bolts are completely encapsulated, so they look like new still. And it also looks like somebody might have put anti-seize on them. Yeah, somebody definitely put anti-seize on those, so that's a good sign. Um, Need to get the brake line off though. That's the scary part, but it's covered in oil at least. Hopefully I can break it off with this. And by break it off, I mean break it loose. Got a lot of room to turn it, but it's coming off. So there were four bolts on the back, so I got those all out now. So you'd think it would be free. Yeah, it's just stuck in there. All right, there's one. Yeah, there's a a lot to take apart there. So let's take this to the workbench and see if we can get freed up. If we can't, I might just go buy all eight of them that I need. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is try to clean up the threads on this as much as possible. All right, you can see the threads actually look really clean on there. We're gonna to try to get this to slide out though, if we can. Oh, there we go, it's moving. But yeah, this needs to be able to move independently of this because that's what adjusts the uh, brake tension. So let's put this in the vise and see if we can spin it. Hey, we got it. Oh, it moves up there. Okay. Well, that makes more sense, I guess. It'd be nice to be able to pull it out a little bit and see the piston, but maybe I can if I can put it back in here. 
There we go. Uh, the piston in there is really rusty. Yeah, that that is not going to seal. The groove, like the whole cylinder in here is completely rusted and stuff. That's just going to leak. We're not going to be able to use these. Well, since the wheel cylinders wanted to be a pain in the butt, um, I'm just going to work on the master cylinders here. Get these both replaced. Um, I did order all new wheel cylinders. They'll be here probably next week, so I have to wait on that. Let's get this master cylinder off. I might as well do the clutch one at the same time since we're here and get this all replaced. All right, should be good to take it off. I would say that was probably leaking. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah, glad I'm replacing that. Get this cleaned out in here. So I didn't buy a brake booster because they're also a lot of money. And just hoping one of the ones that I have would be okay. But it's gonna be hard to say. Odds are they're not gonna be good, but I figured it was worth a shot to try because they're like, I don't know, $180 or something. So funny enough, I actually bought um, an off-brand one, but um, this is an Asian, Asian master cylinder so that's kind of a plus so yeah this looks way better it actually came with the sensors too i didn't even realize it came with these so yeah this is a nice little unit here um i do need to bleed this before i put it on i kind of forgot about that but the problem is i don't have hose lines that go from there to there i need to make some i guess so all right i'm not sure where we're at in the video here but I got the master brake master cylinder off and I was going to replace that but then I ran out I yeah I just I I'm skipping around on this stuff so don't mind the brake master cylinder for now um, we're going to do the uh, oil filter uh, lines here going to the oil filter because you can see here this one is frayed pretty bad from rubbing on the steering column there or the steering shaft so I bought two uh, braided steel lines for that. So that should be a lot better. And I don't want it to develop an oil leak and ruin the engine or something. So let's get those swapped out. All right, so I got both of these hoses off. They are the same exact length and they have the same exact fittings on each end. So it looks like I did order the correct ones. So thank heavens for that. Um, I need to take these out and make sure they're the same length because they are a different part number. Um, not quite sure why, but we're going to take them out and make sure they are the same. So it looks like they're the same length, but one of them has a plastic coating on it. So I'm wondering if, I'm wondering if maybe that one with the plastic coating is supposed to go on the side with the steering shaft. So if it does hit it, it's not going to rub through. Although it is stainless steel braided, so it probably wouldn't rub through anyway, but I'm assuming that's why. I don't really know, but that's what we're going to go with. All right, the new lines are on there. You know, steel. I want to like zip tie them together or something because this one wants to go up against the exhaust manifold and that wouldn't be good. But yeah, they're on there. They're tight. That should be a lot better and I won't have to worry about that now. So look what came. A huge box, but two fenders. <laughs> the funny thing about these two is on here it says Land Cruiser FJ45 and Jeep Fender. That's just terrible. I cannot believe they call them a Jeep Fender, but anyway, all you Land Cruiser people will understand what I mean by that. So let's get these out, make sure they're not damaged because I don't want damaged fenders and see how they look. So there we go. These look really nice. 
first new body panels we have. But it looks like they have all the uh, nut zerts and everything welded nuts where they're supposed to be. Um, it'll be interesting once I get it in there to make sure they all match up, but I'm sure they will. But they're a little scuffed, like, you know, got a little scuff on them, but they just have a primer on them anyway, so I don't really mind that they're scuffed a little bit on the top. It's just more dense that I didn't want to have to deal with, so. But yeah, man, that, that's really nice. That looks so good. Yeah, it has the bracket or the holes for the uh, emissions canister in there has the bracket for the coil on there so yeah i'm really happy with this this looks good looks really good it'll be interesting to see how it fits but probably not going to put them on for a little bit i might actually put them back in the cardboard just so they don't get dinged up or something but yeah i'm not going to paint them either i'm just going to leave them this black color for now I'm just gonna put them on there because as you guys know, we're not actually fixing the body on the Land Cruiser right now. We're just getting it drivable and these are kind of splurging a little bit on it because that front fender was driving me so insane that I just, I couldn't handle it. So I just bought these, but they're kind of expensive. With including shipping, those were about $750 for those two. So yeah, not the cheapest thing in the world, but It'll be fine. <laughs> it's not the best, but the fenders look very nice. So I'm glad I got them and I won't have to worry about that now. But we're going to leave those off because it's much easier to work on this with the fenders off, obviously. So yeah, that's gonna, those are going to be the last things that we put on. Anyway, we got these oil return lines on or the feed and the return line on. So that's all done. Yeah, I think what we're going to do next is get the clutch master cylinder off and i have a new oil or a uh, clutch line flexible line here that's stainless steel that i just showed previously it's actually right over here so this will replace that so i have that to replace and then we also have the clutch slave cylinder which is right here to replace got the whole clutch hydraulic system off here so the slave cylinder the cylinder is just completely rusted in there it it was never gonna move so I'm glad I'm replacing that this haven't actually opened up but I bet you it's probably the same yeah it's not looking good I mean I guess technically it moves, but I highly doubt. Yeah, it's actually stuck all the way in, so that's not gonna happen. So the only thing we're reusing on this is this and this, I believe. So yeah, let's get the new stuff in. All right, so this is our new clutch master cylinder. for now it doesn't look like it's painted I might actually spray a coat of paint on that real quick but I think yeah see how that one actually moves and there's a spring in there that pushes the cylinder back out and obviously that cylinder is not working because it's seized so that's cool have to bleed that off but yeah I bought the ones with new reservoirs as well because I figured these plastic things are all probably not good anymore and I was missing a lot of the caps because they're just all rotten as well so paid a little bit more but I got all the reservoirs on the masters so that's good I got a new one for that let's find the uh, slave cylinder all right so here's the slave cylinder I'd rather have this on here still but like that so this is painted so that's nice we got that and then this rod will go in here let's take this off so yeah see the pistons all the way out so this rod which we should probably make this the same length 
as this one because that'll probably be a good idea so you can see it needs to come out some more so that's about right there I wonder how many more threads I have okay yeah there's plenty of threads so make them the same length and that would probably be good right there so I'll tighten this nut down and that'll be the correct length hopefully and then we'll need to get this on here goes in there and then this will go on here and that will go in there but I think that is not there we go push that in a little further it's all the way out so get this on here that's on it's in the groove where it sits on there so now we're good and the hydraulic pressure is what holds this pressure on this so should be good there I don't think that plug is the right size it's a little small but all right let's tighten this up real quick probably a 14 and a 17 would be my guess yep All right, done. So that's ready to go on. That's ready to go on. I, actually, I might paint this real quick. I just think it's a good idea to paint those, or else they just get a ton of surface rust on them, and they look terrible. Whole they'll end up looking like this. And I'm pretty sure this is the same line as well. That end looks right, and that end should go in here which it does so yep looks correct Let's see this should go in here looks like that does thread in there so that's good and it looks like there is a crush washer that's supposed to go on here and it came with one which is nice so we'll put that on there and then yeah, we should be good from there. I guess we might as well just put that on right now, actually. Just get on there, get over with. Okay, that should be good. All right, so that's ready to go in. All right, so I'm gonna spray paint this real quick and then we'll get this on. All right, we have all new clutch hydraulics. So I got the clutch master cylinder painted. Looks good. Everything looks shiny. I taped off the zinc coating in the reservoir because I didn't want to get that painted. So that should be good. We got the only thing that we kept was this metal line right here. And then we got our new stainless steel line. And then we have a new clutch slave cylinder there. So everything should be good now. Hopefully, we will see. Hopefully the clutch disc and pressure plate aren't like, or the clutch disc and pressure plate and uh, flywheel aren't fused together. Don't know. We'll have to bleed the system. I guess we could do that real quick. Bleed this system off. Yeah, see if the clutch actually disengages. Also, one other thing. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get this clutch master cylinder off because you have to loosen up the brake booster to be able to get this back bolt out here. So, honestly, kind of a design flaw. You should be able to get that out without having to remove the brake booster. They could have moved one over just... A tiny bit more and it would have been fine but you could just barely not get that bolt out so yeah it's a little bit of a pain maybe there's a way to do it but I could not figure out a way so I just loosened the bolts on the back of the booster which honestly they're really easy to get to so it wasn't a big deal but just something to think about all right so I got the reservoir filled up and I just opened this and pressed the pedal a couple times and fluid started coming out I just kept filling up the reservoir and it just gravity bled so I tightened this back up and I adjusted the length on the pedal. So now let's press the pedal and see if the uh, clutch fork moves. I'm assuming it's moving. I can't personally see it, but I'm going to look back at this footage 
and see what it's doing. But I bet you it's moving, which means most likely the clutch isn't seized. So that's a good sign. We won't know until we try to start it and put it in gear, but that's a deal for another day. All right, so I've been working on the front brakes quite a bit. I got the wheel cylinders off of both sides. You can see that here. I got the drum off this side, both wheel cylinders off. The brake or the brake shoes on this side were also completely delaminated and you could see they had spun in there. So yeah, garbage. The cylinders on this side were also seized even worse on the other side. So though it's all taken off, you can see here I got the new hose on here. So that's all ready to go. And then on this side, the wheel cylinders are off. I got the new rubber line on here as well, and I got the new rubber line back here going from the axle up to right here. So that's all done, and then I haven't started the back yet. I got the wheels taken off, but haven't started back there yet. And then finally, all of the wheel cylinders are here. So I went through and labeled each one where it goes because yeah, there's just, it's easy to get mixed up. They're all fairly similar, but yeah. Anyway, I ordered these all through Rock Auto, not sponsored, but you can see the part numbers right here if you really want to order these for yourself. But it was way cheaper ordering them myself than ordering them through a kit from like Spectre Off-Road or whatever. They have like a whole stuff like wheel cylinder kit but they charge you like a fee for making that, so not worth it. I just went through and picked out every single one, so hopefully they're all correct. They look good. I did notice, they're all the same brand, but I did notice some of them, um, not that one. Is it this one. No, it's this one. So I did notice some of them, like this one here is painted, which is nice, and it also came with mounting hardware, which is really nice. But I noticed most of them are not painted and didn't come with mounting hardware. So it's kind of hit and miss, I guess. Um, these ones definitely look like they're older. So maybe that's why I think, yeah, this one's also painted and it came with hardware. But there's three that have a smaller box, and I bet you all three of those are the ones that are painted and have hardware. Yeah. So the bigger box ones, I believe, are like a newer version, and none of them are painted, and none of them came with bolts. It doesn't really matter. The bolts that came off are in fine condition, so I'll just reuse those. But it's nice that there's a painted, but obviously it doesn't really matter in there. It's not going to be a big deal. So I'm gonna get these on the front. I'm not gonna record any of it because it's extremely boring. I'm not gonna do a time lapse. I'll just show you when it's done. One eternity later. All right, we are all done with all of the brakes. Each wheel is done. All right, so we got all of the wheel cylinders replaced. There's two on each wheel. We got all the brake shoes replaced. There's also two on each wheel. Um, all of the rubber lines have been replaced as well. I checked over, like there's another rubber line there. I checked over all of the metal lines and they seem to be very solid, so that's good. I didn't break off any of the uh, solid line fittings. I was able to get every single one of them free, which was amazing. Um, I don't have any video of doing any of this because I started a time lapse to record doing one of these and they were just taking too long. I was running into several issues, which I can talk about, but the time lapse just was taking too long, believe it or not. So I don't have any footage. My camera kept dying because it was taking so long and then, yeah, not great. So, um, yeah, you can see right here. Each one of these wheel cylinders has four bolts holding it on. And then there's a brake line going to it and then the uh, nipple to bleed it. So each one of these wheels took probably over an hour. The first one and the second one probably took 
an hour and a half or two hours to complete because yeah i i ran into some issues the first issue i had was the hardware to hold the brake shoes on so these clips were the original ones that were on it and these pins were the original pins this is the hardware that i got with my hardware kit and i don't know how they expect you to use these but i guess this actually goes this way but these pins were too short you can see they are well slightly shorter I think some of the other pins were actually longer on the front. Let me see here. Oh, I guess they're about the same, but they were shorter, which wasn't easy at all. And then to make things worse, the clips in these springs were way longer. So it was basically impossible to use this new hardware. And unfortunately, I threw away one of the sets of this the original hardware. So... I didn't have enough of the old hardware, which it was still usable, plenty of functionality left in these, but I didn't have all of them that I needed to make it work. So what I ended up doing was going down to the parts FJ and I tore off one of the brake drums off of there and I was gonna steal the hardware off of that. And it turns out the older ones apparently didn't use any of those hardware. So what they did instead, so there's this hole here and that's where the hardware is supposed to go. Um, you can see I don't have any of it on there. What the old ones did was the springs right here. I don't even know if you can see that. So the springs are right back here. They hook up here and then they hook down on the bottom down here. Instead of putting them on the front side so you can see them, they put them on the back. So that way it holds the shoe to the drum without any hardware. That's how the old ones were. So I just copied that on this one. And surprisingly, I think this was actually easier to put these on without having to put that stupid hardware on because those are always the biggest pain in the butt to try to uh, spin that clip to get it to lock in there. This, I just put the springs on there on both of the shoes and then I got it over the hub. I set the top one on there where it's supposed to go and then I just pushed down on the bottom one and put it in. It was... It was a little harder than that. It, it was harder than I make it sound, but it was easier than trying to mess with all those pins. And yeah, it functions exactly the same. Like they're not gonna fall off. The other one was exactly like this as well. So yeah, that's what happened there. Um, the other thing that took forever was these inside screws on these wheel cylinders are too close to the hub to be able, or the knuckle, whatever you wanna call it. Um, it's too close to be able to uh, loosen with a ratchet so I had to hand like with a wrench just loosen them and you can't get very much spin on each time so it just took forever to get them off. The back ones were actually quite a bit better. Uh, they were a lot easier because they didn't have any of the steering stuff and the front ones if you can see here the center line comes in here and then it splits to the front and rear wheel cylinders so the back ones, the line comes in on one of them, on one of the wheel cylinders, and then it goes through that and then up to the front one up here. So it's a lot simpler system and you can just take the lines off and then you're free to take off all the bolts and replace everything. So that's how both of these are. So yeah, other than that, these are basically exactly the same. The wheel cylinders are different for the backs um, but other than that, they are the same. So there's one other thing I had to modify as well. So the wheel cylinders, the ones that are black are correct. All of the other ones that aren't painted black, they're the correct wheel cylinder, but the end that is adjustable was not correct on them. So it's maybe a little hard to see, but this is what's going on. So these are the adjuster screws that go in the end of the wheel cylinder. So they just thread in there. This one isn't correct because it's probably not for this wheel cylinder, but it threads in there. And this is the one that came on the new ones. This is one of the old ones that I didn't need. But you can see the difference in gap on each of those. So this one's too small. They all, or not all of them, but half of them needed to be this big. So what I did was I just took them all off of the old ones 
I made sure all the threads were good, which they were, and I just cleaned them up and I put them on the new ones. So this is one of the rear shoes, just one of the old ones. This one's actually, the rear shoes were in perfect shape. I probably could have left them, but I had the new ones, so I just used them anyway. But the reason that these needed to be wider was on the shoes, one of the sides has a wider, like, it's just wider on one end than it is the other. And for some reason, I don't know if this would even fit. Oh, see, this one would fit on here. So maybe the shoes that I got were just too big. I don't know, but the shoe, the new shoes that I got, they, this part was too wide for this to work. So that's why I had to change them. They're all changed out now. The only thing I have left on the brake system is the master cylinder. Um, I did clean up all of the drums. I just wire brushed every single one out and you can see it's shiny. It's not perfect, obviously, but it will definitely do the job. All right, so we have the brake master cylinder here and I made some brake line adapter things to go into here and these need to go all the way to the bottom of these reservoirs. And this is how you bench bleed a master cylinder. So we're gonna fill this with fluid and then push in right here on this until all the bubbles come out. And then we can take this off and go put it on the FJ. And then we'll have to bleed all the brakes. Take a screwdriver and just push in here. Not too fast. But you can see lots of bubbles. And then you let back out. And then you just do it again. You just keep doing that until there's no more bubbles. So I'm going to do this until there's no more bubbles and then we'll get on the FJ. All right, we got the brake master cylinder on here. I got fluid in there. I got the lines hooked up and I have also already bled the rear brakes because I wanted to make sure everything was working right. Got them bled, I think, good enough for now. Hopefully, I might need some assistance to make them better. Now I'm gonna do the front brakes. I'm very, I don't have a whole lot of brake fluid left, but we'll make do. So how I've been doing this is I have this, I have this little vacuum pump here. So this end, I put on the little bleeder screw there because I want fluid to actually be able to stay in the end of the tube here. And then I will add some vacuum. Hopefully it holds, which it is because the bleeder is actually not open yet. <laughs> Loosen the bleeder, go up here since there's vacuum on that and press the brake pedal a couple times. like that and then we'll see our brake fluid has gone down and you can see here that there are bubbles coming out of that this still barely has some pressure so we'll just pump this back up you can see how it's just pulling all the air out of the line so basically we're just going to keep some air pressure on or some vacuum on this line Lay it down again and go press the brake pedal. Just got to make sure that this fluid doesn't run out or else this is all wasted. <laughs> I was able to get all of the brakes bled. I had my wife come out and pump the brakes and honestly my little vacuum pump did a great job. There was only one or two of the cylinders that had a little air in them so that was good. The pedal was really soft still because I hadn't adjusted each of the uh, wheel cylinders yet. So these do not automatically adjust. And there is a little hole on the back side. I don't know if you can see it, but I can stick my screwdriver through there. So there's a little hole on the back side that gives you access to this wheel here. So you stick a screwdriver. Actually, I think they make a real tool for this. 
but you stick your screwdriver through. I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see that, but you get in one of the grooves on there and then you just spin it. It's a very slow, tedious process, especially for the first time of setting it up because you probably will have to spin it out quite a ways unless you get it perfect before you get tension on it. But um, when you, as the uh, brake shoes wear down, you'll have to come back here and screw these out a little more and that will give you your pedal feel back. So I'm trying to get them both this one and this one down here, you gotta try to get them as even as possible. And you just basically pull them out or screw them out until the brake shoe is barely touching the uh, drum. So I've just been going around all of them and doing this. And once we get this done, we should have brakes. All right, so we got all the brakes done. I don't think we're gonna be doing anything else in this video because this video is already getting pretty long. So the next video, I'm not sure what we're gonna be doing, but we have a lot more to do still. Um, I need to recover seats. I wanna clean up the interior on it. I, uh, we have fuel stuff to do. I have the fuel tank we need to put in and new fuel lines to put on. We have the whole front we need to put back together. And yeah, I, I think at that point we'll probably be getting close to being done. And then I would love to be able to take it for a little drive, but the weather is supposed to warm up in about a week. It's gotten below freezing now again, so not as good right now, but next week it's supposed to be in the 50s. So hopefully we can take this out for a little spin, but there's still salt on the roads and stuff too. So I don't really want to drive it when there's salt on the roads, but we could at least take it for a little drive around the property or something. So or up to the car wash and give it a good bath because it really needs that. So anyway, thank you for watching. Um, I do have a question for the John Deere people out there. So my John Deere Model A, as you know, um, has a bad head gasket. I have been trying to find a good head gasket for it or a replacement, but it's actually been very difficult to find a head gasket for it. So. If any of you know a good place to find a head gasket for that tractor, let me know. I'll put the serial number of it down here so because that's what they go off for models and stuff. So serial number for it will be right here. Um, yeah, just let me know where a good place is. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.